is Chris, also known as Doc Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? No damn well who I am. Who the fuck is that? Hey, Hokie University, I am back. Yes, there is actually another classroom. I thought I was going to do any more, but I, uh, I lied. I lie. That's what I do. I lie a lot. And uh, I am back, and it's really cool today because we're now coming down from the whole thing. We're just, like, chilling. We're just relaxing. We're smoking all our cool shisha, all our cool products. From what, you ask? I can hear you. You said you guys loved uh, H-E-W-19, third year in a row, fucking, it was a banger, uh, the expo was a blast, all the cool things that happened that weekend was a blast, and now, I have my good buddy, my for former reviewer, Jake Jacobson, who can rev himself, uh, so everyone, a little round of applause to... Who can rev? He's, he's back, everyone. He's here. He's not packing a bowl. He's not packing a bowl. That is a rare thing. I will capture it on uh, camera one day, maybe in the wild, when he's just outside packing a bowl. We will get it. But we are here to talk about the the expo, man. Like, you know, we, we, we want to know all the nitty gritty and, you know, how it stacked up to last year. We want to talk about the vendors in a uh, official manner and, and get the take and the word from... Uh, uh, a deity, a god himself, someone who has the ability to turn invisible at the expo, but you know he's there because you <laughs> might you might get like a glimpse of him, but you know he's working. Jake, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. That was quite an introduction, but in my, and in my defense, man, no, nobody asked me to pack the bowl. I, I always comply when I'm asked nicely. You know what? You know what? That's okay. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, what we need to do, we need to start a petition. We need to have a live Jake Jacobson Hooker Rev bowl pack. You know, we need to we need to get this done together as a community. We can come together and make this scene happen. You know, <laughs> 2019. This is the year of Hooker Rev pack and bowls. So, dude, c first of all, congratulations. The expo again was amazing. Everyone had a freaking phenomenal time. Uh, I had a quite the experience, and I now know a little bit about what you guys go through. Where you now don't get to just walk the floor and enjoy the fruits of your labor. You actually are in full work mode 100% of the time. Is that true for you? Oh, 100%. And and so even even like, I mean, you guys put on a great event as well, but you got a little bit of a taste of it. I mean, it's a lot to coordinate. I don't like the taste. The taste, <laughs> the taste is bitter. It's rough. You have to literally drink about 15 White Claws because there ain't no laws when you're drinking claws to get that taste out of your mouth, man. But, like, if you were one of the thousands of people who showed up to this event, man, you got to enjoy tobacco, different types of pipes from all parts of the world. And now, it's got to be really tough to put this shit together. Like, Dude, that's the, and that's the pressure, okay? So, when you, when you peel all the layers of, of something of this magnitude apart, it's really that. You have 2,000, 3,000 people in a room everybody's got to have a good time yeah nothing can go wrong we could do 99 things right but do one thing wrong it's like okay we gotta we gotta put out this fire right when, when you said like 3,000 people my anxiety just kind of spiked a little bit because we we had like we had 180 and 180 doesn't compare to 3,000 people but like I my anxiety was through the roof like I was I had an outer body experience when you're trying to do something of this magnitude so like from from like your perspective like is it totally hard to get everyone on the same page and everyone being like hey listen we're gonna do this we love to have you on board right like how how many conversations happen to just get like this thing together like thousands of conversations like non-stop hard work basically is what what i'm hearing it goes into this it pretty much is i there's there's not one easy way to summarize uh what it what it takes to coordinate something like this but but essentially is that like even when I try to explain it to, um, to like even my friends and family, it, it's really it's really difficult to to include everything that's involved. Yeah, it's it is it's, it's a lot of conversations. I mean, uh, you know, first and foremost, it's an it's an event. It, it you know, yeah, obviously it's an event. Secondly, it still needs to operate as a business, yes. right? So you know, everything has to be transparent. Everything has to be 
user friendly. And then thirdly, then you get the aspect of making sure that you're, you know, you're hosting, you're hosting properly. Yeah. You know, even when you invite someone into your house, like you want to make sure you're a good host, you're going on a trip, you want to make sure you're a good host. And it's the same thing. You're mm -hmm. bringing all these people in together. First and foremost, you have to be a good host. Yeah. Now, you've got the vendor working parts to it. So people ask me too. I, there's more than 15 vendors, everything from electrical to contractors to building to printing. There's 15 vendors that are involved, over 15. I want to say it's 16. Then you've got, um, you know, of course, the exhibitors is, is, a, is a top priority to make sure that, you know, they're, they're organized and they have everything they need and all the information they need. And it's not, you know, it's not small. It's not a small packet. It's a very big packet to, to have to know on point at all times. And then lastly, yeah, just just the attendee side and you know just the distribution of information and the organization of information now i'm, I'm not gonna lie man when when john and i linked up to to do this uh for the very first time we were like you know it's probably like a solid five six months of uh of work and you know because john has his businesses and i have i have my set of businesses yeah i don't, I don't know how many that know but like you know we, we our, my group runs a lot of we, we, we could definitely tell you, you guys are very hard working. So it's like not only do they have to do the organi organizational setup, which falls on them, mm. but they also have to get the, uh, the, the vendors who are there. It's their experience and how they, for, they, they see their product being showcased in the right light because every vendor has a different vision of how they want their product to be represented. And then sure. on top of it, they're worrying about the, the, the people who are actually coming the people who the event's for, they have to make sure their experience is above and beyond everyone else's as well as that. And it's, it's a very tough thing, but you just touched on a topic. I don't think I asked you last time you were on here, when like John dropped out, it was just me and you shooting the shit for like three hours. <laughs> uh, but I did ask you, how did you like get together with John? Like I know you guys have known each other for a while. It's, yeah, it's been a while, but how yeah. did, like was John just drinking some wine one day and he's like, you know what, Jake, you're the man for the fucking job, dude. Like, you know what? I need your fucking expertise and experience to fucking <laughs> make this shit fucking gel together and fucking run it like a smooth fucking train. Like, how did you guys come together and be like, you know what? This is going to work and let's do this. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad we, I'm glad I can tell this story. So. I wish it. I wish it were that version where it's true to character to us. John's having a glass of wine. I'm. I'm having a glass of Tito's. <laughs> but it really didn't even work out that way. It's okay. So I, okay, this is how far back it goes. Like John and I met. I think it was about nine years ago, uh -huh. or eight, maybe even more. I don't know. It's kind of. It's kind of in a blur. Watch it, Jake. You're dating yourself. Ah, uh, for sure. Dating for yourself. Sure. I'm definitely old enough to smoke. I can tell you that much. <laughs> you, you, you don't. You don't look it. You don't look it. But go ahead. Yeah, so I mean that's you know that's how far back John and I go, and um, you know at the at the time that's when I was I was really starting to ramp up and and insert myself into the into the industry, getting my projects going, and um, you know like on my side of things. And John and I linked up for a casual hookah. This was about seven years ago. Um, there was actually no alcohol involved, uh, so and we were just kind of brainstorming. You know, this is what. A lot of people in the industry do is just on the back end of things you want to brainstorm kind of like how's which directions are is are things moving towards um kind of what's the future like you know development all, all kind of, and collaborations on top of it mm -hmm. and then we we just kind of both land at the same thing it's like okay so i you know i'm participating in all these trade shows john's participating in all these trade shows and we just casually said, like, why isn't there a, an, an American hookah show? It just doesn't make sense. Okay. That was it. That was just it in passing. Fast forward, um, you know, obviously I was busy with, with all my stuff. And then, and then John, uh, you know, John did it the first year. Mm -hmm. he, he pulled off Hookah Expo the first year. And granted, it was in its growing stage. It's no, it was nowhere near of, of uh, kind of the scale of what we had just did two weekends ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was a start. It was, it was a spark. Um, and, you know, just, just like you've been saying, there's a lot that goes into coordinating something like this. And one, I don't care who it is, one person <laughs> cannot do it themselves. It takes an army to pull this off you it know does. it does i i completely agree with you and yeah. I, 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 I mean for you realizing okay john did this last year you're coming into your first time look he did it two years ago and then you're coming into it last year your first time where you like what the fuck 
yeah. did I get myself into? Holy shit, this is a lot I, of fucking I had, work. I had a couple of those moments, but you know, on paper, like I, I map things out. I'm a, I'm a planner. I'm yeah. a planner. I map things out. And I was like, look, man, I mean, I'm coming off of doing 12 to 15 trade shows a, a year. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's on a different scale, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's organization, right? Understanding yeah. how things are in an organization. And it's also like you have yeah. you, you had the drive to be like, I let's get this shit done, and let's not yeah. just get it done, let's get it done fucking right. Let's yeah. do it like our way. Let's do it the way we envision this, and to, to make our reality and will this shit into existence is fucking. No, 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 big big time, and it was like a big hats off. Uh, you know, for even even outside looking in, it was a big hats off to John for. Um, having started it and you know taking the leap to to do this because I always, I've I've said for years, Chris, I've said for years that if if a, as a community and um, you know as like a physical community, if if there's not growth in that kind of aspect, mm -hmm. it's going to cause things to become stale from an innovation standpoint, from an interaction standpoint. So I really liked where John's head was at. You know, my first question was like, look, we're not. We're not trying to get rich off of this. That's kind of the one thing that I'd really like to to make sure that the intentions are clear. Mm -hmm. Because anytime two entities or two known, um, you know, like what, let's call them like two two known people within the industry get together, it's like, what's the intent behind it? Yeah, and right? and everyone's mindset kind of like you could be the best person, but you kind of also swing there. Like, what what's their end game? Like, what yeah. are they doing? And you try exactly. like you're trying to say like you try to be transparent. You're like, listen, we're trying, we're trying to raise the bar. We, we realize these people around the world are doing it, and they're doing it big, and they're doing it mm -hmm. bigger and better every year, and, and people are realizing, oh shit, they're doing it in Brazil, they're doing it in Peru, they're doing it in right. Russia, you know, they're doing it in all these different places, and it's like, well, why are we sitting on our hands here? We can fucking do mm -hmm. it. We have the resources. Let's make this yeah. happen. You yeah, know? we have the, we have the community behind it. We have the intent behind it. Um, and, you know, that's what, that's what really attracted me at first, and so, I mean, really how this partnership came into fruition was, uh, it was last year, early, uh, January, January of last year. So obviously a little bit of, of leeway time between when the planning actually started. I, I just called him because one of my core operations is a hookah distribution warehouse. So we supply wholesale to, um, or, and we've been doing it since 2012. So, um, you know, even on the back end of the distribution of the things, I'm calling John basically like, hey, do you know anybody that has this? Yeah. And then it was like, hey, well, I have, and this was from John's side. He's like, well, I have you on the line. You interested in partnering up at, for the expo? I was like, what? <laughs> you, caught, you caught him in his thought process. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like, what? Uh, and then I was like, shit, that actually makes sense. And then, you know, we had, we had one meeting um, and just everything was in line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, like we were very much on the same page and it's like, man. I pride myself in in holding uh, the relationships and and always being you know first and foremost a good person mm -hmm. when whatever the situation might be um, because in my opinion that's what you die with you don't you know you don't die with your dollars you die, you die with your reputation or your legacy yeah there's there's a very strong thing I'm very I'm very yeah. uh, big advocate of being like you can do it one of two ways the wrong way and you might still get the outcome when you do it the right yeah. way you treat people how they're supposed to be treated yeah. with respect and stuff and yeah. and value everything that's yeah. going into it but it seemed like you guys you guys were like because people are flexible right yeah. people can go back and forth give and take and stuff like that yeah. that's part of the decision making process but it, it, it's very important for people who are working together to be on the same wavelength to be like we have this yeah. same we have the same goal and we yeah. know how to get there so it's, yeah. it's very important so that was last year this year man you have all that knowledge from last year going into it fucking jake there with his fucking suit looking like a fucking g at the door greeting everyone so this year uh, let's let's get into it bro let's get into it. you guys fucking you guys added so many cool things and one of the things i want to talk about because my boy julian's in here the hookah bandits you added you added like legit like music acts you added people who who brought like the bar up a little bit more and not only like music acts like you can get music acts it's fucking vegas you can get anyone like you can get like fucking you can put an advertisement and get a bunch of people but you yeah. got you guys went out there you listened to the community you saw what was going on you yeah. saw fucking uh splice of julia and you're like these guys aren't just really good at what they do Hmm. They aren't just really talented musicians because I yeah. saw Julian up there fucking yeah. doing the DJ shit. I don't know what he was doing, but it looked like magic to me. Yeah. Uh, but they're fucking enthusiasts, man. They're like, they're in it. They're like 100% invested in the community. Be like, yo, 
like once it done with state, once they got off the stage, it wasn't like, oh, let's go back and let's go to like yeah. half a bar or something. No, they were fucking there. They yeah. shot their own footage. They fucking made their own friends. They were smoking yeah. real mint out the ass, even though Cameron ruined their bowl. Cameron, we're, uh, you, you gotta pack them a new bowl. It's fucked up. You don't fucking purge someone's shit and walk away. That's messed up. That's uh, <laughs> bad etiquette. But they fucking went around everywhere. They tried all the products. They fucking were in it. They were digging the fucking uh, Sookas. They were digging the Migs. They were looking at the Russian pipes. They they had a fucking blast. Yeah. And uh, thanks for bringing those guys on board because I know they had a, a great time. Also being part of the community, it, like it, it it gave them like you know like a cool experience. It's awesome yeah. to see like oh yeah in the hookah community we also have people who are really fucking dope at music and we have we have a lot of different people in this community. It just shows yeah. you that John and Jake fucking realize like hey they want to do music oh we have enthusiasts that do music and they're fucking good at it and we want yeah. to show you to them so that was, uh, that's fucking dope i just wanted to give a uh tip the hat to fucking uh julia splice because they fucking killed it they killed for sure it. and i and i love that you brought that up um <clears throat> because the, the whole intent behind what we're doing here is to involve the community as much as possible so like even even this like look look at it from my perspective on like the back end side. So all the cool like vinyl wraps and doors and signage and all that. Uh -huh. I I have my set of vendors that I like to work with that have been reliable for years and all that. But here here was a risk that I took and I'm glad I took it. But now I can I can confidently say the the vendor now are are, are a graphic vendor mm -hmm. is part of the local Vegas Huga community. It's one of his other businesses that he just opened up. But look at the risk behind that. It's like, hey, we're putting on this whole thing. We need we need the window vitals to be on point. Yeah. Like, just start it up. Cool, man. I've known you for years. I've probably known this guy for a decade. I'm going to just trust you. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, you love the community. You love the hookah industry itself. You, you know what we're fighting for. So, mm -hmm. boom, we use that. Julian and Splice, dude, these guys are awesome, right? It's just cherry on top. It's like, you, you know, you, you felt like what their intent was. They were just happy to be at the show. They like, were having you know, a blast. And, and on top of it, they were interacting with people. Like, yeah. they weren't like, oh, this is VIP, like, you can't be up here. No, people were coming up to them, shaking their hands, they had full fucking blown conversations with other people within the community. The thing is like this, it's very important to have the people relatable. You have to have yeah. the vendors relatable, you yeah. have to have, like, now you have the music act, which was super yeah. relatable. Like, like people felt like they could go up and talk to you, they weren't intimidated by your, like, presence yeah, or something sure. like that. And that's super big to bring the community together more, you know? Yeah. No, and it is, and I, and and you know, the, as cool as the performances were, we can't take full credit on those. So the the amount of effort that, um, and this came about when Sir Bentley uh, hit me up about this and was saying, "Hey, can we bring an act mm -hmm. to the show?" I was like, "Huh, okay." <laughs> Yeah, this this is my hair is a little bit more down on this or we're you know we're speaking out loud. Yeah. You know, I get that kind of question. It's not just a yes or no. It's like a how do I how do I pull that off? How do I do that? Yeah. Okay. So I gotta construct a stage, like a legitimate stage, mm -hmm. gotta sound equipment, this the DJ, the sound tech, you know, the permits, uh licensing music I don't I don't know where to, you know, oh, to God, stop. Dude. But, but <laughs> I knew what their intent was. So Sir, Sir Bentley was really championing to get this uh, to get this going. So like I said, we can't take full credit on on the acts and the performances. Um, but but the added entertainment and just you know adding to the experience of it was just surreal. So we did everything we could to support that with yeah. the signages and you know. But like that the that's what you need. Like yeah. like John and Jake, as you hear, like you're hearing it. They they have a lot going on, but also as community members, as people who want to see stuff like thrive and become bigger, we take a little bit of responsibility too. Like as like going to the expo, don't be an asshole. Like have a good time. Don't start no bullshit. You make it, you know. And and the vendors, vendors like help out with this. Like hey, you if you have a fucking great idea, reach out to them and like be like, hey, what can I do to help? How can I make this like a bigger thing? How can I how can I make this go smoothly? You know and. and it seems like everyone's coming together. It's different from three years ago, yeah. man. It, and you can see it. You can, yeah. you can almost, you could feel it. You could feel that it's different from three years ago. But that's fucking awesome. Hats off to Sabetli and you guys for bringing in uh, yeah. Julian and Splice and for them being so fucking awesome. Um, really quick, I want to look at the chat. I'm not ignoring you. We're just, this is what happens when me and Jake start talking. We fucking just go down the fucking rabbit hole. This is the only time we get to talk because usually when we see each other in person, we're doing a thousand things, and we don't even yeah, get yeah. to spend more than like five seconds. We just yeah. give, we give each other the wink from across the floor, like, "What's up, bro?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So let's see who we got. We got a lot of people in here. Hey, Tamora, Arby, what's up, buddy? Uh, good job on packing those bowls for Tangiers, by the way. These, those things were fucking roaring and they were going. Uh, Gregory, what's up? Awesome job with your booth. Uh, you had uh, really good visuals, by the way, at your booth. It was amazing. Uh, and and they, had, uh, they had some really good flavors there. Uh, Narek, Narek and Tori were home runs. They came by uh, the frat house uh, that Saturday. They, a lot of people got to uh, really sample and know more about what Heavenly was about. And that's that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to get the people connected with the, the brains and the faces, you know, and, and really have that conversation, you know, because a lot of people just don't, they're a little bit, you know, hesitant to try new products. My buddy, my buddy James, hope your baby is doing fantastic. I think it's like, what, 10 weeks old? No, older than that. Big baby. Paul, what's up? Stefan, Eddie, the whole crew. I got the boys in here. Matt Dezen from the AM Hookah Podcast. They were there. Adrian and Matt Dezen, first time meeting, was at the fucking frat house. It's amazing. They are not the same person. They are two different people. Who knew? So um, we got a bunch of people. Uh, Dimitri, what's up? Tony, what's up, buddy? How you doing? And 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 my buddy Nader. I, I finally got to meet Nader. He's a fucking stand-up dude. I love him. Uh, Mario, Tanner, uh, and uh, Julian's in here as well. So, but dude. All right, let's get let's let's break it down. Let's break it down. Let's 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 get the people. This was in uh, it was in Vegas, South Hall. I always forget because it's in like the back of where all the Ubers usually drop you off. So like you gotta tell the Ubers, no, go 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 through this side path. Don't drop me off. I don't want to walk a, a mile to the entrance door. Please drop me off in front of the thing. So yeah. uh, uh, it was in Vegas, man. South Hall Two is where it's at. It was Saturday and, and Sunday, the third and the fourth. Uh, man, and then we had the hookah battle, which we will get into that, which was totally awesome. But, so last year, you had 24. Hey, man, South Hall 2 is where it's at. Oh, I hear me. I hear me in your... Is that... I'm echoing in yours? Oh, yeah, the sound up? Oh. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. Come on, Jake. This is a technical difficulty. I was trying to look at the comments. I know. I'm looking at it, and there's 71 comments, but how do I... This, this, so, you might just have to refresh the page. I so, thought I was invisible for a second. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 last year uh you had 24 like vendors right like 24 yeah. legit Decent. vendors yeah. this year you had 34 yeah that's a lot of work to up it a whole other 10 people a whole other like new people coming in and and being exposed to this thing for the first time we had aeon which was really cool they had that little yeah. tiny hookah I, I i keep calling it the verbo but verbo is a fucking house renting app i vivo vivo something like that it was totally awesome i loved it but they they sold out they sold out i was bummed yeah. um we had uh let okay before we get into it al fucker came out man holy shit like last year man i i grew up smoking al fucker that was that's my bread and butter. I have a whole kilo of orange citrus and mint down here for those days where you just want to go old school and and put it in like an old school like a uh, pipe and just chill and relax. Man, oh man, they came out with new signage. They came out with new flavors. So for anyone who's saying uh, Al Fokker isn't listening to the audience, well, tough titty. They fucking came out with new flavor. Du they changed double apple up. How the fuck do you change double apple? To a bunch of people who don't smoke double apple and make it appealing to the mass audience. They put, was it double apple chili or some yep. shit like that? Holy yep. shit. So when I, I, been, I was talking about it and had that like nice anise taste that you get from that solid double apple. And then it drops off with the like sweet, sweet taste at the end. So people who don't like double apple, this is your fucking jam. This is your chance to get it, man. This is, thing is amazing. Uh, so that new signage. So I want to see, like, I'm going to see if you notice this, right? So I was at the Al Fokker booth. You had the uh, you you had Dom and Mike from Oasis who are always good at packing bowls. So those guys work fucking hard. Give them your money because they know what the fuck they're doing. They're packing, and I noticed something. I was like, okay, there's three separate booths here. All right, so but there's only three flavors. Wait a second, are they putting one flavor at each booth? No, that can't be it. That's not how it's done. That's weird. So I go over, I go over to Mike. I'm like, Mike, what what's in this? Uh, what's in this hookah? He's like, he told me what the flavor was. I was like, okay, cool. I put it down. I was like, Mike, what's in this other hookah? He's like, bro, it's the same flavor. I was like, wait a second. You're telling me you have five hookahs set up for one flavor? I was like, that's crazy. Because if you know, whenever you're trying to try a new flavor out at a booth, it's usually only one. And by the time you get that hookah and you're staring down the person who has the pipe, you're like, come on, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I know you're getting that good smoke. You're like, Yo, some shit's about to pop off past the fucking pipe. Like, I want to try it. It looks like it's going. By the time you get it, shit's dead. And that one flavor you wanted to try, you didn't get to try. So Al Fokker... Woo! Boy. 
They, they, you can go with any one of the pipes. It was the flavor. It was hitting good. Mike had it good. Dom had it good. Man, they were crushing it. And that style where, like, they had more than enough to sample and taste. And it's different. Like, this one was started before this one. So you can see the progression of how the flavor goes throughout the timeline. I was like, this is so cool. Like, uh, is it just me? Or I think that's kind of like, that's kind of like a little bit of a, like, change in the game as far as, like, flavors. Like, busting them out and stuff like that. No, you, you, you hit the nail right on the, you, you hit the nail right on the head. Because the, I would say one of the core differences in just the energy uh, between HEW2 and HEW3 that happened was that exhibitors, especially like the, you know, the exhibitors that returned and, and did it, you know, a second year around or even, you know, some of them three years mm -hmm. uh, consecutively, they knew what to expect finally. Like, you know, we were touching on this a little bit. It was like last year was the first time John and I got together and, you know, they didn't quite know how the show was evolving. So mm -hmm. it was like, it was more business to business. Is this like, what's this like open lounge concept thing? It was, it was new. Um, but then, then this year, you know, and, and I think, I think a company like Alf Ocker coming out, uh, with a bombshell like this to saying like, Hey, we built this entire like booth experience. Yeah. And I'm not just saying like it was Alf Ocker. It was like a whole like expo, but Alf Ocker is like a, a perfect example. Cause they've been in the game forever. Mm -hmm. They, they and knew, they, out. they, they knew flow paths of how to come in and out. They exactly. knew where people's eyesight were going to be exactly. and, and not for nothing, but Alfaka is like the grandfather of the hookah business. Like they've been around. Everyone who's smoked hookah has smoked Alfaka. You know what you're getting. I right. didn't know what I was getting. Yeah. Like this it's handcrafted. Like how, do you, how do you change that game, right? You know, it's it's major. Because it's it's not only like oh they've been around for five years or ten years. They've been around for a fucking long time, and it's it's like instilled in your brain. Like this is what yeah. it is. That's yeah. that's how it's always been. Yeah. It's not gonna change. They came in yeah. and changed it up with handcrafted batches, which is what I think what yeah. they're calling it now. And I was like, oh my God, this is this is what we needed. We needed like the big guy on the block to come in and be like, I see what all you other motherfuckers are doing. Let 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 us let us crack at it. And then we're gonna fucking elevate the booth. Like their booth was like they they did it right. They had they had interaction stations where you can go and take like these green screen pictures. Like they had it, they had it solid, man. So hats off to them. I thought it was like amazing. Uh so, like, what are your, what are your, some of your favorite, like, booths that you kind of, I know it's hard for me to ask you this, because you're like, they're all my favorite, <laughs> but, like, what did, like, like, Al Fokker's definitely, like, yeah. like, up there, that, that was really good, I, I think, personally, I'll go, I'll go first, then you can piggyback, so I'm not putting you in a pigeonhole here, so, uh, I always like speaking to Omar and seeing what he's working on as far as the bowls, so he had some new bowls out, uh, they had some really awesome, like, designs on it. Like, he, he's always super creative. He always brings out the alpacas. This time, it was like a petting zoo. Mm. He, had, he, had, he doubled the alpacas this year. He went big. He went, he went for broke this year. I know a lot of people love taking pictures of the alpacas. Um, we had, I'm, not, I'm not one of them. That one really just... It, dude, he was making eyes. It like, it like yeah. they're, not, they're not happy creatures. They lock eyes with you, and they're just like... They think they're above everyone else. Like, I'm I mean, like... If we can, like, re re you know, reference Exhibit A, I think it's on Omar Omar's uh, Facebook wall, but you see how far away I was standing and from said alpaca, or was, llama, sorry, llama. It was, it was just grilling you? It was just grilling you from across the floor, right? Not right, really, yeah, just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so we had alpaca, we talked about alpaca. Azor is always, like, they've be they've become, uh, for, for me, smoking, like, I would, I was happy to see Tangiers there and Tangiers coming out and, and, and showcasing their products, you know, and, and, and having a presence there as they should. But I was super happy because Azor is something that I smoke on the regular. I smoke Azor all the time. The dark uh, leaf is kind of like my favorite. So it was awesome going there and, and, and seeing Azor doing their fucking thing, uh, coming out with Rio Mint, which was amazing. I don't know if you got to try Rio Mint. But real mint is like Bermuda mint on steroids. It's like the old school cane, if I can say that. Sorry, Tangiers, but it is. Uh, bring back old school cane. Tough shit. But I, it was it was amazing. Uh, Fumari. Let's talk about Fumari because Fumaris they they go to everything, dude. They go yeah. they, they're everywhere. Any anytime there's something with hookah, like CBD, smoking, sunlight, anything, people, Fumari is there, and Fumari has kind of like become the staple. I think, in my personal opinion, they always have, like, a solid booth. They have yeah. that booth where you can go and, like, relax and sit down, which, yeah. you know, at the expo, relaxing and sitting down isn't two things that you get to do, you know? So right. being able to, like, sit down and chill is so cool. Do you, like, yeah. 
did, did you did you get a chance to go to like Fumari and just like like check it out like relax like sit down anywhere at all? I don't know if that's a rhetorical question or, or not. I mean, clearly the answer is no. I'm running around just making sure that nothing's burning down literally and uh, just making sure nobody needs anything. My goal for next year for HUW... Four. Quattro. Quattro. Uh, my goal for next year is to actually have like an hour where I can experience this, <laughs> this expo. Yeah, because now, now the only time you get to experience it is through pictures. <laughs> Pictures that yeah. you aren't in. <laughs> and I'm never in them. Sometimes you see a blur. <laughs> like... Yeah, yeah. Jake is actually just naturally a blur. Like, you can't actually get a bit of a good photo. It's impossible. I'm like the worst person to ask. Like, oh, what was, like, the newest thing or the coolest thing you saw at the show? I, uh, you know. The, the, car know. the carpets were nice. I like the carpets and the floor was good. And the ceilings were real nice. And the place didn't burn down. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fire department said we did a good job. No. <laughs> Uh, I, I realized this year Hookah John went a little bit bigger with his yep. booth. He had yep. all his pipes out. He had the bowls. Uh, you could sample all the... I, I personally never got a chance to really smoke on the Saoka when it first came out. Uh, so this was my first experience to actually try his pipe, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, a couple... Maya was there. One of my favorite booths. And uh, uh, seemed like fucking... I think his... Having his tent. Nirvana had a goddamn tent in the middle of the expo floor and it was awesome it had like a really cool like lounge setup like old school like turkish style where you sit on the floor and you can just relax and chill this was like my home base because like i kind of got to like get away from everyone for five minutes like everyone was around me i was like please don't look at me i just want to yeah. smoke some doka and, and, and feel like a human being like i'm enjoying this <laughs> So I really love the fact that he came out with a different design from everyone yep. else. He made it like uniquely his own. His his crew was killing it. They were working oh, sure. so hard. And that's not to say any other crew because like the the people I'm about to mention next is Eternal Smoke. Now, yep. when 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 Eternal Smoke came to you, were you familiar with Eternal Smoke? You were just like, who are these people? Like where? You know, it takes a lot to surprise me as far as like, wait, where'd you guys come from? Like, this is. This is like brand brand spanking new, right? Yeah. No, I I did not I did not uh, know about Eternal Smoke beforehand, and when I started to uh, get to know the crew a little bit more and like what they were doing, it's like wow, this is, this is fresh. This is like, you know, this is it's an added innovation. It's it's know? nice like, it's nice being surprised because they're not even yeah. out, they're not not even out a year, right? Yeah. And they're at the expo, and not yeah. just like I have a little like desk and a little thing yeah. over it. They went big. They had a huge huge like like setup like they went yeah. they had a nice glass thing with their banner oh yeah with the logo and they had all the flavors inside their crew was like constantly making sure like everyone who came by knew what the product was about they had yep. video games set up and i love video games they had they had Marvel, uh like uh mortal kombat people were playing mortal kombat man it was great it was a cool like super yeah. nice interaction and and all their people there were like just nice people like yeah like, you didn't feel like, oh, this guy's, like, a prick. Like, no, they all took the time out to talk to you about different flavors. And if you didn't like that flavor, they would recommend yeah. a different flavor, which was fucking so cool. So hats off to Eternal Smoke their first year. I personally hope they come back next year because yep. they – I think they killed it. I think they killed it. I, oh, that's why, like, even even for – especially for their side, they like, put yourself into their perspective. They've never done – um, I believe this was their first time exhibiting at all. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot to take in, uh, you know, from from like a brand or a company standpoint. So they took on this whole thing, not quite ex knowing what to expect either. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I kept hearing like, oh, go, eternal smokes popping, eternal smokes popping. So I finally like made it over there. I think it, you know, it took me a bit, but <laughs> I finally made it over there. And I was just like looking around, like, man, this yeah, is, it's know, different. It's smoke? different. It's it's it. You yeah. you can tell eternal smoke went outside the box with their yeah. with the thing. They tried to make it a little bit uh like you know exclusive to the people who are in there. Yeah. I would personally like to see it blown out a little bit more, a little bit wider, yeah. a little bit open. Next but next year I gotta help you guys. We need we need a bigger boat for eternal smoke. Yeah, like, I think eternal uh, smoke. Yeah. Like, yeah. their, their creativity, you can tell there was a lot of creativity behind right. it. And one of the guys who deserves credit for that was Joe from Eternal Smoke. Yep. Hats off to you. You you uh, you did a really good job. I think everyone was really impressed with what you guys pulled off. Um, I, I, I got I to gotta say, I, I love uh, my boys over, Sky Hookah Distribution, man. Those guys are just a ton of fun. Just hanging out with them. Uh, a lot of people liked um, 
what they were packing. I think it was like uh, Dark Side and a couple other like stuff that they had in there. It was just different. They had the Matt Pairs out in full full force, man. It was great. Like everyone was having a good time. They had uh they had some bowls here, which I I got I got one right here, the Dom right. bowl, which is one of my favorites. Uh, I love this thing. It's just fantastic. Uh, so, and and they had uh and so they had some nice um people there to uh, keep you distracted if you if hooker wasn't your thing at that moment but uh so tangiers was there man trifecta i didn't even get a chance to really check out anything for trifecta they did they have their own booth this year or were they sharing like what was the i, I don't they know were, yeah they were there it was actually to the right of, or if you're looking in from the entrance it was to the right of the tent towards the stage oh because i didn't see like any banners or anything i know they were there i saw i saw zach from strictly shisha there at the end of the expo and he was doing some like last minute deals and selling all the stuff out you so i know they're there. Yeah, man too many too many white claws and i gotta <laughs> ask you on that on a separate note i you know, i'm not up with this white cloth bad but no it seems no, no bring, bring it now bring it now <laughs> let's go you got a white claw question i i am a white claw i have my associate's degree in drinking white claws by the pool i am going to graduate next year to a bachelor's yeah white claw is the trashiest drink you can imagine it's uh -huh. just, it's just basically <laughs> carbonated like alcohol and uh yeah it's fantastic but you don't it's one of those drinks where you don't realize oh shit i had like 15 already that shit's, yeah. that shit's gonna creep up on me pretty soon it's not like right. tito's tito's you can taste it be like okay i, I right. kind of feel it be building up but uh yeah i'm gonna try to bring soju next year Okay. We got, we got to get soju. Get some fire water. Like White Claw was H E W three. Soju is. Soju is quattro. Quattro. You got it. We got. We got to see if we can get a soju venture. <laughs> um. So we had uh work bun man. I love their products. I actually just uh ordered some off of Hookah John's website because he's having a a uh, clearance thing right now. Clear the warehouse, right? And the bear uh. Uh, bowl that they have is fucking finally on sale and I got another poker so I would say uh, go head over there and check that shit out because it's cheap like real cheap and get it it's awesome uh, Zahara was was dope they were there they were they had all their different uh, anodized hookahs so I, 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 are they, yeah I'm pretty sure they anodized all different colors they had those in full force I actually got to sit down there with uh, Narek and Tori it was a great time uh, that's when I learned so did you did, did you meet Narek from heaven leaf yeah okay do you know how old he is no okay jake i'm 33 how old are you jake 33 how old do you think Derek is Ugh. yeah that's right tori i'm putting Derek on the spot right now 27 you thought he was 27 i thought he was older than me it's the it's the nicely groomed goatee it throws me off i thought he was older than me i found uh -oh. out he was three years younger than me and i was like Holy oh, shit. 30? Yeah, he's 30 years old. He actually, his birthday was the weekend of the expo, I think. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I was, my mind was blown. I was like, so now I just call him my little brother whenever I see him. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Zomo, down to the last two. I want to just give a shout out to Zomo. Zomo had a really nice setup, man. Th so, I was talking to Ferrari, and I was talking to Alex, and I was talking to Mo. And they told me they had to bring the shit in, like, on a crane. The, 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 that big white, like, like setup they had? They had to bring that shit on a crane? Is that true? I don't remember a crane, but, I mean, there was definitely... It was a tall structure. Yeah, like, and I was like, how do you guys get rid of this? And they're like, we have no idea. <laughs> but they, they, had, they had some really good flavors. They've been retooling. Zomo's been retooling over the past year. Uh, probably even longer for the U.S. market. So the dedication is definitely there for uh, people in the U.S. market to really try it. Uh, they toned down, uh, when I spoke to Ferrari, he said he, he, he redialed up, uh, redid all the flavors because there was too much menthol. So in, like, mm. certain flavors where there wasn't supposed to be menthol, there was, like, too much. And he's like, yeah. they had to go back to the drawing board, and they listened to the community, and they said, okay, you know what, these flavors are, were made for a different market. Go into the right. U.S. market, we got to retool the flavor profile and all that stuff. So, like, hats off to Zomo, uh, Alex and Mo, and Ferrari working super fucking hard. And last but not least is Zumeru. And we spoke about Chams and Steve and everything there. Man, they had they had uh, these cool hookers there, like rocket ship hookers or some stuff. I, I forgot. Uh, Amy? Are they Amy hookers, I think it is it's called. These things were really cool to look at. They're they're like Zoom Merit has like a really good flavor profile. They have the gold, they have the the blue, which is like the mixed and stuff like that. And then they have the the, the dark uh, 
the, the black bag for like, you know, the more robust hookah smokers, the ones that want that like really strong taste. And that was really cool. He had a really nice booth. He was giving away a lot of stuff, giving away so much shit, like goodie bags and all this other stuff. So hopefully you got a chance to check out Zumeri. So that was the rundown. We got to talk about this studio not safe for work. Mm. <laughs> what was this? What, what, what was it? What was like? I didn't understand what I was looking at. I was seeing pictures of hookah related things, but how did they, how did, how did that happen? How did, mm. how did you bring them in? All right. So <laughs> the, I don't know if, I don't know if they're watching or not. I kind of figured a question like this would come up, but I mean, <clears throat> it, I didn't really, I really didn't question it when it came across. Cause it's like, oh yeah, it's hookah, hookah artwork. This is totally different. This is awesome. Right. And admittedly, I, you know, I, when it came across to my desk, I had to start looking into this. The NSFW, like, raised a bit of a flag, like, like they're what? They're like, what does that mean again? Like yeah. <laughs> so I'm, look, I'm looking through the website and we had to, man, we had to throw it to like our council. We had to, that's like, we had to really kick it up to make sure that everything was uh, okay to do at this kind of event. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, we, we're, we're still a relatively conservative, conservative industry. Um, but yeah, no, and the, and the guys over there are great. And they, they were just saying like, you know, of course, like we're not going to go full blown and like, bring, but they're, they're very much involved in kind of all the happenings that are happening, uh, or yeah, all the happenings that are happening mm -hmm. uh, on, on the California level in regards to like SB 38 and 39, they've really been following this. Okay. They're very passionate. So there's another company that's just very passionate, um, uh, on the hookah side of things, which is why, like, you know, they do a whole bunch of stuff like media and photo, you know, photography and stuff. But this is like one, it's like a passion project for them. Yeah. But, you know, they, they participate a lot and they work with like different vendors on, or sorry, manufacturers on product photography for hookah, like, mm -hmm. you know, right. And then, of course, like the artwork, you know, from, from my, from what I heard, like the response is great, but I figured you would ask something like that. You know, I'm going to like, I got to, I gotta be like, what was this? Because you know what? Yeah. There was a, it was all hookah. I was looking, Tangier, yeah. Regal, you know, Eternal. I'm like, whoa, what? What? Yeah. What is this? This is different. I don't know yeah. what what this is about. But it's yeah. good that you're shining some light so people understand where they're coming from. They are yeah. community members. They do yeah. photography and other things, and they were just sharing their passion with the community. I think a lot of yeah. people were just were like, what was this about? This is weird. I don't understand yeah. like the the nuances behind this like yeah. why were they there and the, and the owner of the booth said it said it best because uh, i don't know if you got a chance to talk to them but i was i was like asking them like oh like what kind of questions or interactions are you getting mm -hmm. or like how did you even get into this yeah um, so he was saying he's like yeah you know they go they buy online just like all of us they go to shops they buy mm -hmm. and their whole their whole premise behind or, or their motivation on why they did this is they're seeing like online pictures or like product pictures and you know, with their artistic eye, they're saying like, why, like, why isn't like the hookah like glowing? Why isn't it like the forefront of, you know? It it it's, it's, it sounds exactly something that like an artist, like an artistic enthusiast, right. would be like, oh man, we need to elevate this. We need to make this something else. Yeah. Let's, let's bring this up. And that's yeah. where that's where it comes from. That's yeah. what people wanted yeah. to understand, yeah. like the connection. Like, what is this? Because I know not a lot of people went up to him because they they didn't they didn't understand what it was about, so they didn't feel comfortable to be like, mm. oh, I'm surrounded by lovely ladies smoking hookah. What's going on? Right, What's this about? Right. But uh, it's so good that you you shine some light and you gave a little bit of backstory, yeah. and that's what we wanted to do with that. Yeah, for sure. And like, that's not the process. It's not like oh, an exhibitor applies for a booth. It's not just an automatic like okay, or it's definitely not an automatic no because we feel a certain way. It's not. It's like, look, there's a very few parameters that we consider guidelines mm -hmm. uh, as far as like, you know, eligi eligibility to exhibit, mm -hmm. and it's a very short list. Yeah. So as long as it, basically, as long as it passes legal, we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the council of hookah smokers. I feel like I feel like you have like a round table, and everyone just puts their their stem down on the table, and it's like, okay, we pass this. Like, I, that's what black robes like. The place yeah. is cloudy. Like that's when you say like oh, a council, I'm like, oh man, this is the council. Oh man. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so there was a lot of cool stuff to be seen. And uh, John, and Jake, you guys just dropped a couple videos. I dropped a couple videos. A lot of enthusiasts. A lot of people were taking pictures. They've been dropping pictures of their experience and videos. Mm. So like, if you did not make it out, there's a ton of way to to see what happened. I know the FOMO is real. You feel like you're missing out. And yeah, you were missing out. You got to get there. No excuses. Next year, make it your destination, man, because uh, it's going to be awesome. Jake, yeah. I think I think you need your own booth that you can sit down at so people can actually see you and talk to you. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> this is the the, right. the hookah rev booth. He will black, he'll black, wave to black you. Carpet, black carpet crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no. There's a lot of there's a lot of people behind the scenes. So like anybody that even follows me on on uh, my personal social media, um, you know my my crew certainly deserves all all the credit in the world when it comes down to what what they put in. Like even uh, you know our team here, the team that's dedicated to the expo. There's there's so much muscle that goes into this, especially like the two months leading up to it, where it's just absolute crunch time. Jake, I thought you were the muscle. I mean, you don't know you don't know this, but your nickname on the street. I, is, ever, I haven't really been working out as much. Your, 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 your nickname yeah. on the in the expo floor was the muscle. I mean, I, 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 I didn't make it up. I mean, this is the community. They were telling me, hey, where's the muscle? I was like, I haven't seen him. He's he's, he's right. around here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know you were asking this too, and I, I I don't know. I guess people are curious. Is like they see me, but they're not quite sure, right? Yeah, they <laughs> like, they, they see you, but they're like, oh, he's 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 running off to somewhere else. I'll, I'll catch yeah. him later. But that's yeah. the thing. That's the thing with the expo. Like you'd be like, oh, I'll, I'll do that later. I'll, I'll get around to that later. Never comes. You never get yeah. around to it. It doesn't yeah. happen. You gotta do it when you think of it. Uh, yeah. So let's see, guys. If you have any questions for Jake Jacobson, who can rev himself, man, now is the time to fucking start putting them down in the comments. What up, Ferrari? How you doing, buddy? Always great to see you. You always like spend uh, your time and you fucking greet me and you fucking always remember my name somehow. I don't know how you do it, but you always greet me, uh, Ferrari from Zomo. Uh, awesome dude. Uh, Tony Palmieri. Tony Palmieri. I, I, you know what? I'm not. This isn't the time or the place. I won't get into it, Tony. But you need to step up your fucking Korean barbecue game because you you fucked up. A chef shouldn't be cooking raw food and giving it to people at a Korean barbecue. I'm just saying, Jake. I, I don't know much about etiquette, but I'm saying if you're a professional chef and uh, you know I, I'm gonna have to get fucking uh, someone to come in and be like, this shit is raw, okay? Dejan, what's up? Dejan's in here, man. I had a good chance. We went out to. Um, Oh, uh, what's that club? We went to a day, the day club. Have you ever been to these day clubs? I'm sure you have, but these like pool party things. Oh my God. hundred dollar drinks. Fantastic. You just like, I felt like a starfish the whole time. Uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, Paul, Paul says, Eddie Chung, I have to wear suits next expo to confuse people. Is that a, is that a, is that an Asian joke? You just, you just... I mean, I could I could use a, a lot more help from suits. Like, just put on a suit. I'll get you an earpiece. Let's let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> Jake Jake's Jake's putting it out there now. He wants his own secret service. He wants a hookah secret service crew. He'd <laughs> be like, "Sorry, you can't." Jake Jake's not taking appointments right now. He's he's too busy smoking out Fokker. He needs five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So just throw your comments down. Um, what Mike Mike Abigania says, Jake, show us those pants. Oh man! What is he talking about? What is he's, he talking? Uh, What's going on here? He's he's sharing some of our very intimate conversations that we have. <laughs> it's not it's not intimate no more. Now now the people now you're gonna get like messages in your inbox about what's up with the pants. Yeah, well, I guess you'll have to <laughs> message me to find out, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta slide into his DMs, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, Cameron? How you doing, buddy? Uh, Nathan, man, Nathan, hot box, bro. Like, did you get a chance to smoke the hot box? Now, I, now, and that's yeah, that's one of that's one of the ones that we uh, we didn't quite touch on. Like, man, their their rigs are so nice. Yeah, like the, like so nice. Like, let's get our reviewer hats on. Let's go back a while, right? Yeah. Like, cube hookers, nothing new. They've been mm. around forever. But mm. when you actually go up to this hookah and you check it out and you see all like the ingenuity put into it how the stem goes up and down how like basically the purge system works how like it has a built-in square diffuser and he even had the little mola catcher which was a, a miniature hot box yeah, yeah. Right on top i was like yeah. this dude deserves some shine he's he's putting in a lot of work here man yeah. he, and i think it's a really cool product i think it's a really cool product i think the more people try it the more like he's gonna be like shit i have to make like 100 more or 200 more yeah. so nathan buddy uh you're gonna be busy you know in the usa if i remember correctly yeah right over there in arizona i'm a very big advocate for uh things like that and you know like and, and nathan's hooker or the hotbox hooker is a perfect example like a lot of people get that sticker shop like oh shit it's 329 it is real, yeah. This is, where, this is where I butcher. This is the information that I'm not supposed to grab. But let's say it's three hundred fifty dollars, right? Uh -huh. So it's three hundred fifty dollars for for hookah. You get a sticker shock. Um, but man, a lot goes into stuff like that, especially making it in the U.S. It's not cheap. Yeah. And uh, you know, I don't know how much people are following like the current economic climate, but the more we can produce here, the lower. Uh, 
the lower everything will go down. And I think I think if you haven't checked out the hot box, yeah. head over. Hooga John has them on the website, I believe now. Yeah. And and if you got a question, man, Nathan's a community member. He's a regular yeah. dude. You know, yeah. just you can go type in Nathan. He's gonna come up at the top. You know, like unless you have eight other friends named Nathan, then you have to scroll down. But yeah. shoot, shoot him a message. Ask him if you have questions. That's what we try to do here. We try to make sure that you get the information you want. And we connect you with the people who have that information. No, and and you know just like not just to continue on to that. I mean, he didn't because you said uh, the box hookah is not a new thing. It's not. But hot box hookah comes out, and they they actually they innovated. You know, like the adjustable diffuser. You know, like the features that you were saying. Yeah. It's cool to see stuff like this pop up year after year. Yeah. And that's you know that's because, what makes. Because Jake, work. I think we had like a conversation where people we like the the word last year was basically like oh there's not enough like Americans coming out with their own products. Dude, like 2019 is like the year of like the the the, the enthusiasts coming out. You have you have pack mats, you have you have resin kings, right? You have you have Nino still fucking cranking out bowls. You have uh Brandon George, you have Kyle Smith. These are all people who live in the United States who are making products here and their products are really popular now overseas. So like and, and then now we have Nathan making a product and then also I don't know if you got a chance to see a lovely 3D printed hookah. Uh, did you see the hookah battle? This is a, this is my segue, by the way, into the hookah battle. I, I, are you not my last year the 3D printed? Did you see this year's 3D printed? Do you do you know what 3D printed oh, hookah? 3D printed. Well, little known fact is the champs, the champions who won really? hookah villains. That sword is 3D printed. Nice. Yes, David Harris, uh, Wayne Gonzalez, and Jeremy Bird, hookah villains crushed it so they created all that stuff from scratch you know they tapped all their friends i think uh nathan made the the box the big giant box that it sat in uh jeremy bird and um david harris spent count like you're talking about 900 something hours crafting the sword with the down stem oh, wow. into the box uh jeremy was working hard on the whole stone thing then you had you had wayne doing he makes the handles from resin king so when you could yeah. you he literally took the sword out and it be of the hookah. It went from hookah to stabbing weapon immediately, yeah, nice. and it was awesome. That so that was three D printed. So yeah. so it just goes to show you uh, American ingenuity, creativity. You can come up with some crazy shit. For sure. And dude, hookah battle. I I did get a chance to break away and try everybody's entries. I was so blown away. Like I can't even single anybody. They, any one contestant out. I was blown away by each entry. They they stepped it up. Like if we're gonna be honest here, last year. Yeah. All right, you know, like you had the fruits and, you know, a lot of people just went with the custom rigs. I think this year, mm -hmm. this year was the benchmark. This year, for, was, for sure. this year for was the benchmark. This year, the Russians were like, oh, oh, fuck. Like, you guys can make shit. Like, we were like, because we might have got dogged a little bit. And if they're looking at, like, the last two years entries, okay, I get it. I get it. We didn't come out with our best. This year, we were like, all right, uh, here's my, here's my hookah. That that's a that's a metaphor for penis, by the way. There's like oh, thank you for yeah. explaining. I, yeah. I I gotta make sure you know my audience yeah, kind of fluctuates. The same age, so. Yeah, you know we we, yeah. we get it, Jake. That wasn't for you. That's for everyone else. Okay, so, gotcha. <laughs> but they put their hookahs out on the table and they wowed the judges. The judges, yeah. I believe, this year were like, oh shit, like these yeah. people need to come out and and they can compete now. Like we got like the fucking like we got the stamp of approval. And thanks to hookah villains for like making sure that we have our place on the market and thanks yeah. for having the hookah battle at hookah expo three this year so no, it, was, it was major there's so many people that are tell you know tell me afterwards like no we're we're gonna jump in we're gonna take the throne next the uh, next time oh it, it lit okay. a fire under so many people's yeah. asses because they were like they might have like and it happens you win a couple years you rest on your laurels someone yeah. comes up kicks you in the yeah. ass you're like oh yeah. fuck i yeah. and then you automatically start because you're on that hookah high where like yeah. you're in the expo and you're like everyone's like oh what the fuck are we gonna do now let's fucking yeah. let's make a dragon let's go yeah. let's go capture a dragon we're gonna hollow it out and we're gonna make it into a hookah and they start thinking yeah. creative fucking crazy things yeah. so it's so so dope i love it uh and cameron was a judge so hopefully hopefully i will have the title of a judge eventually one day who knows uh but um uh, let's talk about other things these are some questions i got from people they knew jake was coming on so they, they sent me some questions here so uh, the number one question was like, uh, people were kind of surprised that the line was so long. And I yeah. think Jake was kind of caught, I mean, uh, John was caught 
off guard too when he knew that the line was still so long and it was about like a half an hour into it. Is there anything you see that you can do to kind of eliminate? Because it's, I mean, I, I know you're at the mercy. Like, you're, you're using, those people did not work for you. Those people worked, I guess, for the for the expo. I guess those those people who were doing the, the tickets or whatever. At the yeah, yeah. They're they're hired, yeah. They're hired by us, and it's been the it's been the same group for uh, actually since the original show. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I and I get it, and that's uh, the lines and the weights is is the worst that we feel when it comes. To it. And the same thing happened last year, but this one, I would say, was five times worse. Considering I, I had to take tabs, we had to clear that line five times over. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it's, I, it's not I, okay. I do know that you did try to alleviate that with the VIP yeah. tickets and you yeah. tried to stagnate it for the people who really yeah. wanted to get in early. And right. I mean, even the VIP tickets, dude, you had like a shitload of people come in <laughs> and people, there was a lot of people there for the VIP yeah. tickets who came in early. But so I, I think the line was one of the concerns yeah. going next year. And they just, yeah. they just, I think people just want to know that like you're yeah. cognitive. Cause I talked, sure. I talked to John about it and he was like, yeah, we, we got to fix that shit. It we're absolutely on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't want to make this too long winded, but really the intention of Hookah Expo or HEW as a whole is to is to make things a, a, an affordable barrier of entry for all parties in, involved, right? From the attendees, exhibitors, ev everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, the the like the ticketing pro or platform that we use, they keep fees down for mm -hmm. everybody, so that nobody's you know paying that ten. You know, I don't know what's the last time you bought a concert ticket for for their like ticket socket or uh, not ticket socket, ticket master or whatever. Yeah. The fees are astronomical. Yeah. Now, we don't want, yeah, we don't want to pass that. Yeah. Anyways, long story short, we're absolutely on top of it. The goal is to make the only line being if you're there early, then they line up. But yeah, no, we've, we've, yeah. we've got. I have it. a question here from Travis Litter. Uh, what up, Travis? Uh, he's asking why aren't the QR codes used? It's part of the system. That's that's part of like we don't have full control. Like, it's not our coding. It's not our you know. But we're either we either changing the ticket platform or you know we're getting something custom built out. That's basically what we're starting on already. Okay, awesome, yeah. awesome. I know that thing. So uh, we we discussed your role in this. Uh, so I think we we touched on a lot of things. Uh, so John, being John, lovable John, the other day he put out a live saying you guys are talking about the future. Not even you haven't even left Vegas yet. You haven't even left the expo. You live like five blocks away from the convention center. He's already talking about it. And that's part of the process is like you sit down and you're like, okay, well, what went right? What could have been better? And, you know, what are the things we need to work on and what do we want to add? Yeah. Is there anything without getting you in trouble or me getting a message from John saying, take this video down <laughs> that you could that you could say uh, that, you know, are just like, like maybe improvements or things you're thinking about adding yeah. or, or maybe, you know, uh, stuff along that line. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's perfect. So, and that's, that's probably the biggest conversation that John and I have had uh, two years consecutively. Um, Cause he sees things from such a different perspective. I see things from an even, you know, a completely different perspective. And then we crowdsource the information, listening to exhibitors, attendees, um, and then we combine we combine that to to really hit our bullet points on what we need to touch on. You know, it's not like the post show for us is not celebrating our successes uh, so much as how how do we improve this immediately out of the gate? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, to put that into perspective, the first email that I I sent out after the show, which was Monday morning, mm -hmm. um, was to our ticketing company. Yeah. So that's kind of the, the first and foremost thing we're, we're touching on that that's that's a big priority um because even you know you wait in line for five minutes it feels like 30. you wait in line for 10 it feels like an hour yeah because like you, you also don't want people being like oh i'm not gonna go i'll, I'll go like an hour and a half later and yeah you know the line should be dead they show up in this still line they'll be like what exactly. the fuck is going on yeah so immediately you know the line needs to be mitigated like that's it just it goes without saying Secondly, we're working on some different, uh, we're playing with the floor plan a lot too, uh, to make things even easier for exhibitors. Because mm -hmm. uh, like the worst thing that we that we could encounter is that e even with the kind of the structure that we have for our exhibitors, mm -hmm. um, is that not still not everybody can exhibit. And there's, there's a lot of other companies out there that it's, you know, out of budget and I totally get that people yeah. are just starting out. It's, it's difficult. And then you have the whole cost of exhibiting. So, you know, 
further improving the barrier of entry for the exhibitor side yeah. um, is priority number two. Okay. You know, priority number three is definitely to organize and structure the events, uh, even adding more to that. Because I think the I think the performances were extremely well received between uh, Sir Betley's with Carl Wolf and K or, uh, Super Saco with mm -hmm. um, Chaos Tobacco. Yeah. Very well received, but you know, I I I felt I my heart went out for H two O hookah was which was right in front of the they page. were just getting blasted with the yeah. audio yeah. And in fair warning, we were saying like, you know, it's right, the stage, but that's the action, that's the action areas too. Well, I mean, they get a lot of foot traffic. So. <laughs> okay, okay. I think they might've got a little bit more foot traffic than they signed up for. Um, but yeah, and then just kind of the noise level overall. Yeah. Uh, again, we're not sure what to expect year after year. Mm -hmm. Like a line is a perfect example. Did I think we were gonna clear five waves of, of people having to wait? No, like we did not expect because we don't know. Like when people say, like, oh, how many people are you expecting? Yeah. I could pull the number out of my ass and say, oh, it's gonna be ten thousand next year. Yeah. Wouldn't be true because we just don't know. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know that, and then just we're start we're keep getting like little bits and pieces. So we're just consolidating the information as far as like what are the hot topics and what are the attendees kind of having issues with. Well, or, Jake, you or, being uh, here on Hookah University with our lovely fans here. Uh, any thoughts to maybe looking at including, uh, some of the groups a little bit more next year? For sure. I did it for you guys. I asked that question for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we, and we, uh, the groups, especially the beta online groups have played such a, uh, such a pivotal role in, in this, in this community coming together. And, but more than that. Mm -hmm. All the new people that were coming in and seeing so many new people, like so many, so many people that aren't online, so many people that aren't, you know, uh, let's call it day to day or you know, online enthusiasts, addicts. I get it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they, they're seeing it and they're even seeing like the flyers. Like, I saw people taking pictures of the flyers, like, oh, I'm gonna look up, you know, Hookah University next. I, I'm gonna I, look I, up, I, uh, I saw, I saw the banners and I know, yeah. uh, you know, the other groups probably also yeah. very much appreciate yeah. that. And, and that was, again, this was like a first year trial, like how do we link everyone up? Mm -hmm. And I, this might, maybe this is a sore subject, but whatever. But like, we, you know, we had originally talked about like doing booths, uh, yeah. having a space and all that. But I mean, re reasonably let's, you know, we, we, we got to pay respect to the exhibitors too. I mean, they are investing quite a bit to be part of this yes. and foot traffic and seating traffic wise. Mm -hmm. uh, it, if you just have an area where everybody congregates, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely yeah. can understand that. You don't want to take away from these other people coming in, spending a lot of money, and then you have, like, you know, the enthusiast groups kind of taken, and, and everyone's, like, gravitating over there as a home base. You want people right. circulating, you know? So I it, it might not work out that way, but at the end of the day, it's a hard question. Li for, listen, Jake, yeah. you, ha you have to make a decision. It's either you make no action or you make a decision, then you stand by it, and you see what are the actions. So you saw this year, you're like, okay, so maybe yeah. next year, let's see how we can implement it. And I know there's a lot of conversations, a lot of talk you guys are going to be having, and uh, I don't want to get too into that, but let's, because I, I, I want to be so surprised. I like I like a little bit not knowing what's happening, man. It, it, it kind of like makes me feel like I'm a kid again. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> um, so really quick, I, I, me and Jake have been talking for a minute here. I hope you guys got a bunch of information. If you got any questions, type them in now. Please let him know. He loves questions. That's what he does questions he likes it all so uh let's see let's let's scroll through here it's uh travis is like it's okay uh the other groups are better interacting on the floor than standing at a booth for the weekend that's true that's uh, that's a big commitment you know being at that booth you gotta you gotta be there you, you end up like uh like jake and you're just running around and yeah you don't you guys don't want to be like me man yeah uh, Cameron says, uh, and this is something I think we, we actually talked about this, like maybe a while back, uh, doing something for small creators, having a small booth to run. Um, that was, uh, I'll be honest. They thought about that. They thought about that. They did bring that up, you know, to be fair to them. But again, you have to also be fair to the bigger vendors too. Like you gotta make, he, he did touch on the pricing, you know, like how do we, how do we make the pricing so these smaller creators can come out, you know, like look at Nathan. Nathan just started the hotbox this year. A smaller creator, he came out and had a booth and showcased his stuff. So it is possible, you know. You just got to be smart about it. 
And I, I know I know what you're you're saying, Cam, and I agree with you, but we can't it's not a perfect world. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta within reason, you know? Uh but I would like to see like more like more creators because there's a lot of creators that just didn't get a chance to go out there but i mean the people who know they know but i at the same time i want them to get a bigger platform you know because there's a lot of people still that they can be kind of exposed to and yeah these and guys, that's, that's our intention too yeah. it's, you know but at the end of the day man the like the overhead that and I, and I think everybody's starting to appreciate a little bit more it's um it's 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 just not easy to pull off and make sure that you know all your unknown bills are covered and it's, like i said Number two, we're running this as a business because yeah. we have to. I mean, there's yeah. accounting involved, and um, but yeah, so that that's on that part. I so I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you here a little bit because I've seen this Go question ahead. come up a lot, and I've seen like unofficial unofficial polls going on about you know potential location changes. Mm -hmm. Look, guys, just you got to trust me that the Vegas is uh, is the place to continue this. Um, and briefly touching on this. Uh, between local laws, between being able to smoke inside, being able to have your backyard of your hotel room give you activities where you can't even do everything you want to do in one weekend in Vegas. You know? no, and, it, and it's hard to find another place to do it. The smoking age is another factor. Um, I, I mean, I, I know how many 18 to 21s are, are coming into the show, and it's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Now, if we moved, I would love to move it to California, for instance, uh, or to, to move it even um yeah i don't know it probably california would be like the second contender or someone mentioned the other day like hawaii i would love to do it but i oh. don't think we would all make it you know no, no um, i would be but yeah there, there was a lot of thought going that went into place especially after hgw2 uh as to do we keep it here mm -hmm. it's next to impossible to have it um as energetic as this outside of Vegas. because guys remember like you know they i i know they just had an event in atlantic city and you're not even really supposed to be smoking in those convention halls and stuff like that it's not set up for hookah like uh even when they did the hookah fair here in new york city fucking new york city right they had a tough time finding a venue they had to do it in a casino and the casino mm. thing was so small no one even knew it was here you had to go up <laughs> several flights of steps and then when you were there you you didn't even know you're there like you got to understand it's it's the venue is very hard sometimes picking out a venue to do everything that you want to do and you don't want to concede something you know so yeah. i i think i i mean hey i like i'll keep going to vegas but i i get where they're coming from uh yeah. cameron says can we move the time frame is it too hot is, is that is that why it's just too hot uh brandon opperman says i didn't even get to do everything i wanted to do in five days i couldn't I couldn't imagine just having the weekend. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is... Uh, what is that comment? <laughs> From Cameron. <laughs> Jake is hotter than the devil's <laughs> testicles in August. <laughs> it is hot, but you know, there's plenty of pool parties. Um, yeah, I, I see Paul saying, uh, what about the dates? Can it not be the hottest week of the year? <laughs> It's hot because the expo's in town. That's why. Yeah. I, will, I, will tell you, I will tell you this much. It is there, hot, though. We're, we're, we're probably going to play with the date a little bit. Um, but summer summer is just like logistically, like as not centralized as Vegas is, but it's, let's call it central, right? Mm -hmm. As a destination. Um, summer is kind of that central mark. Yeah. To do something like this uh, mm -hmm. between vacation times and all that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect too much of a play on. Yeah, you're not you're not gonna change the seasons up, probably not. Um... No, and we don't want to. Like we we're we're very much in tune also with other expo and show operators around the world. So it's like we're not trying to overlap and do something when somebody else already has a good thing going. Yeah, because you know, it's not... also like this now. Like yeah. you say, you want to do bigger and better, and you want to get more vendors now. Like if a vendor is based in like Russia, mm. and the expo here is too close to the last expo that you just did it's not practical for them to try to split that up and be like okay now we gotta pack all this shit and then head to america to go to this other thing now now people are gonna start shying away so you need to have that wiggle room uh with the expo so people companies have a little bit of time to decompress they can look at their finances they can make the trips they have to ship product over which is not easy 
you know uh there's a lot of logistics stuff that goes into it yeah. so it's very important for them to know the dates in advance but also not conflicting with stuff that's in their backyard yeah for sure no i mean we are toying with the idea too a little sneak peek but mm -hmm. making making it a friday and saturday show okay what why were, why don't you do, why, why can't you do three days that's that's a lot to ask for, uh, especially from from exhibitors know, or that, from out of town and, and working. Three days working is is hard, it, man. It, it's rough enough for two days because if you see their faces on Sunday, they are fucking exhausted. They are shot. Uh, you guys remember the first day? Um, so I mean, everybody is kind of getting, we'll play with the hours a little bit too. Um, <laughs> so by the time like seven o'clock rolled around on Saturday, because man, Saturday was explosive. Mm -hmm. you, you were there since doors open saturday was explosive so even like doing seven hour eight hours eight hours like even standing and you know doing this whole thing for eight hours by the time seven o'clock rolled around we're like man are you y'all hungry and yeah. let's go get a cocktail let's uh it, it was funny because saturday like i left around like i think five right yeah so, too many white claws i get it so when, when you're saying seven o'clock i was like what number drink well i think i was on black cherry white claw at that time that sounds about a seven o'clock drink so, but I'm like, and then like all these people came out to our event yeah. and then the day before they went to other events. I was like, man, it's a tough weekend for all these people. They are, they are grinding. So I can get it about the, 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 the three days. And also with the time, you know, like you, 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 you play with the time. Like then you have to be like, okay, are the vendors getting the time that they want? Do they feel like they're properly representing exactly. this time thing? And then at the same time, it's like, are we, are, are we open too long where these people are burnt out and, and then people are not getting the experience they want so there's a yeah. lot of variables guys there's a lot of there's a lot of things you have to think of like i said hookie university just had a fraction of what they went through uh you had i mean it's great for the businesses because like especially locally like oasis was popping oasis mm. was killing it they were loving the shit uh but um but yeah man I, it's it's tough and i know there's a lot of like back and forth i get it yeah. I, I understand you don't gotta explain that to me it's these people these people all right so uh all right guys so if you have uh don't have any more questions uh we hope we we gave you some information we hope uh you know you're entertained a little bit you got to learn a little bit more about what jake does uh his thoughts on the expo a little bit more of you know where what direction they're going uh for the next year uh cameron says uh all right cameron this is your last question uh can, <laughs> can we get a day next year with a dunk jake and dunk john just roaming the floor like a tank Oh, dude, you you guys would sell drunk. something. Drunk. Oh, drunk. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a dunk tank. I was like, yeah, let's put them in a tank and like throw the b balls at them. Let's drop them in. You know what? Hey, man, that's, not a bad, that's not a bad idea. That's pretty cool. Like you just swap out people and just people just throw like you know that'd be great. Hang on, let me take some notes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys, you guys want to know what I really do want to work on though? Yeah. Man, and probably too many people are gonna watch this that I are gonna have to live up to it. But I was really trying to get that freaking 15, 20 foot Titanic slide. What? On the, sh on the show floor, but. Oh my God. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, gotta see how, I gotta see how I can pull that off. Oh, I have a question. I have a personal question. So like the expo floor, like do you guys rent out that entire hall? Oh yeah. So you guys have the whole space. Yeah. So technically like say, Say you didn't say you kept Saturday and Sunday, right? Could you still open Friday and throw like a huge party on the other side of the hall with like tables and chairs and kick off the thing with like a DJ and a fucking big after party instead of having to rent something out? Is that is that a thing? I have, I have no comment on the matter at this time. I, I'm just saying it was just a thought. I was throwing it out there. If it happens, it doesn't happen. You guys, can, you guys can put you, you guys can put that shit on me. I'll take the heat. I'm good. Uh, I'm just saying, you know, just food for thought i think it would be fucking dope you know we got to get julian splice really super drunk all right guys uh thanks for uh i want a dunk i want a dunk chris fernandez that's not nice my hair can't handle it maybe jake's jake's is perfect all the time so this is you got angles and shit thank you guys for uh coming in checking us out we'll try to do more classrooms we can get some more people on here uh, talk about nonsense, talk about fun stuff, talk about hookah products, and all that good stuff. So until next time, guys, later.